Many scientific studies have shown that a whole food, plant-based diet can help treat and even reverse many chronic health conditions. However, if done incorrectly, we can run into serious problems on a plant-based diet. So in this video, we're going to hear from Dr. Joel Furman on the three common mistakes vegans make. We know, for example, that plants don't contain vitamin D, as we're supposed to get all the vitamin D we need from exposing our skin to the sun. And this is not just a vegan issue, as vitamin D insufficiency is now recognised as a pandemic affecting 30 to 50% of the world's population. We ideally want our vitamin D levels to be between 30 and 45 nanograms per milliliter. Here in the UK, that's 75 to 113 nanomoles per litre. However, if you live in a northern climate, chances are in the winter months you won't be getting enough vitamin D. So it's recommended that if you get a result below 30, you should take 2,000 international units of vitamin D3. The best way to take vitamin D supplements is with a meal that contains nuts and seeds, as the fat allows for better absorption. So now, let's hear from Dr. Joel Furman. So the common vegan movement and those nutritional gurus advocating vegan diets across the world don't pay enough attention to or haven't paid attention to the drawbacks of a vegan diet. And my 30 years of being practiced as a medical family physician caring for this community, literally tens of thousands of people from across the country, or even across the world, coming to my practice who are getting into trouble on a vegan diet. What are these people doing wrong that's getting them in trouble? And we're seeing the same mistakes occur over and over again today that they did 20 and 30 years ago. And those basic mistakes are not enough vitamin B12, because the RDI for vitamin B12 of 4 to 5 micrograms a day is not sufficient for a lot of vegans, especially as they age. They need more. They need like 100 to 200 micrograms a day, not 4 to 5, because when you're, just, when you're taking a supplement with your B12 rather than food, your requirements are much higher. You don't get as much absorption from the supplement. So that's one mistake. And number two, over my career, I've seen many, many people develop to trouble with mental function, depression, brain function, dementia, on long-term vegan diets because they were not paying attention to the omega-3 content of their diet, of their blood. And that means that for many people, because they don't have enough activity, the conversion enzymes that make short-chain ALA, alpha linolenic acid, into the long-chain EPA and DHA, we supported a study that was done on 166 vegans who are not supplementing with EPA and DHA, showing about a third of them had severe deficiencies of DHA. So it's just a lot of genetically determined factors here, and that we're seeing a very cavalier, almost irresponsible attitude by certain individuals in the vegan community saying you don't have to supplement with EPA and D with DHA on a vegan diet. And I'm saying that may be true for some people, but to make a blanket statement that all people don't need to supplement that is completely irresponsible because damage could occur and it does occur. And those common deficiencies could be vitamin D, which could occur to everybody on a vegan diet or not. They don't get enough sunshine, right? And B12 we're talking about in particular, which the needs are much higher. And EPA or DHA, or particularly DHA, which is available in vegan sources, of course. You don't have to compromise your idea to be on a vegan diet to have that. But we want to make sure because we don't leave anybody in, with potential risks that didn't need to have those risks. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe for more upcoming videos.